Hi crafters, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's George. It's great to have you here. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back and it's great to have you here too. Today, we're gonna talk about the Aldi Red Panda Knitting Kit. But before we do that, I wanna give you an update on George Crafts because I haven't uploaded to the YouTube channel or to the blog in forever. So I think we can agree that 2020 has been quite the year and for crafters like me who sell their work we've been dealing with the effects of coronavirus on our businesses um, at the end of last year i booked up a lot of events so markets craft fairs and things for 2020 and they were all cancelled uh, i make all of my money through uh, sales and commission uh, my youtube channel and my blog is not big enough for google to monetize me and let me make money from ads or get brand deals so um by the way subscribe that will help <laughs> um so yeah i had to think about how i was going to run my business online so i have had to rebrand and i've streamlined all my jewelry lines so beading is out and i am now making jewelry with resin gemstones and polymer clay so i'm producing jewelry with locally sourced wildflowers and leaves and basically anything that I can find in nature I will put some proper pictures of this into the video as well so you can see I've also been making um, wire and gemstone pendants like this one and like this one and again I'll put you some of the pictures in so you can see it properly and I've also been making some polymer clay earrings these ones are from my licorice all sort collection and uh, I'll show you some more photos of those uh, so to show all those new beautiful creations off I have created dedicated um, Facebook and Instagram pages for the retail side of George Crafts um, so I've been putting all my time into that and uh, the wonderful Scotch Lodge farm has been stocking some of my jewellery in their farm shop and they've also been holding pop-up shops so I've been having a few of those which has been great because I've met some lovely new people and I've also been interviewed on BBC Radio Northampton and they offered me the chance to go on the radio in their mid-morning show and talk about my business and myself which was lovely and something I've never done before um, if you did want to hear that it is on my blog at the moment my uh, my other half managed to record that for me so I can share it with you all um, so with all that work I just have not had the time to put into the blog or the YouTube channel um, but now I'm getting used to my new way of working um, slowly I'm finding that I've got a little bit more time so I'm looking to try and get back into working the channel and the blog around my retail business uh, so that's the update of George Crafts if you want to check out the uh, Facebook pages the Instagram accounts the radio interview things like that that I've mentioned or you just want to see more pictures of my uh, new jewelry and other items that I've been making I will link those in the description box below so you can find all of that there um, but now we will get on to the crafting so as I said today's video is the Aldi Red Panda knitting kit um, I just want to say that I don't work for Aldi I didn't design the kit I have absolutely nothing to do with it I, I don't even own the kit um, so you won't see me making it um, from start to finish there's not going to be a row by row video showing you um, how to do every single stitch um, firstly that would take me forever to film and even longer to edit um, and secondly I've done a fair few of these uh, videos but for crochet now so the Aldi shark the Harry Potter doll the Hedwig which um, I'll link those in the description box as well um, and I think I made it pretty clear that I have not enjoyed doing those kits whatsoever um, but you all really wanted to see them so I've done them um, so this video is going to go through all the principles that you need to understand 
to be able to make the project yourself so you can apply the things that I'm going to show you here into the pattern um, and hopefully that should help you to understand what it is that you need to do um, I would guess as well that the principles in this video can be applied to most of the Aldi knitting kits but I haven't actually seen any of the kits so I'm just guessing there uh, most of you seem to really like these videos which is lovely and you've left me some lovely feedback and it's really great to hear that I've been able to help people get into crafting and help people to you know complete their projects that they never thought they would do uh, but there are one or two people out there who have been very rude um, and have left me comments like your video is useless and this that the other uh, because I don't show them how to do every single stitch um, I'm offering you free help with your craft project so you're welcome I guess I, I don't know what to say um, so yeah that's that's a little introduction to the project so the techniques we're gonna have a look at are basic cast on and then we're gonna look at knitting and purling and I will show you how to do stocking stitch and how to do garter stitch and what that actually means. We're also going to look at increases, um, which we're going to do knit one front and back rather than make one uh, because that's the appropriate one for the pattern but they haven't actually told you which one is which. Uh, we're going to look at changing colour, we're going to look at decreases and we're going to look at cast off. So. As I said, I don't have the kit, so I've just got into my stash and I've got two colours of double knitting weight yarn here and I've got some four millimetre knitting needles. So I'll best get on with showing you how to make the basic cast on. So I've changed out my yarn for some smaller balls to make it a little bit more manageable while I'm filming and because I like these colours better. So this is how you start off your knitting. To begin with, what I do is I make a slip knot. So to do that, you're going to wind the yarn around your finger so that you make an X. Put your thumb on top of the X to hold the loop together and then pass the tail through the loop and pull it tight. Then you're gonna pop the loop over one of your needles and pull on the tail. So if you need to see that again, just pause the video, go back, play it again as many times as you need to. And the same goes for all the different things that I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna to cast on some stitches. So you want to make sure that you're working with the yarn that's attached to the ball of wool, not with your tail, because you'll not get very far. So with the needle that doesn't have anything on it, you're going to pass that needle into the loop and then you're going to take your yarn, wrap it around the needle and bring that loop through and then put it onto the original needle. So now I've got two stitches, so I'll show you that again. Needle from the front to the back through your stitch, take your yarn around the needle and bring the loop back through. Put the loop onto your original needle. From the front to the back, round, bring a loop through, put it onto your original needle. And when you get a bit more confident, you can speed it up a little bit by not taking your second needle out. So I've brought my loop through, I'm going to pop the loop onto my original needle and then if you just pull your yarn tight the needle is already through from the front to the back of your next stitch so you just have to wrap your yarn around again and bring the loop over the top of the needle and that is how you cast on. You don't have to do the second method that I showed you. You can just stick to the original front to back with the needle, wrap it around, bring the loop through, 
put it on top or if you are feeling more confident put the needle in wrap the yarn around pull the loop through put it onto the needle pull tight and keep casting on without taking your second knitting needle out so that's the end of casting on if you need to rewatch it just pause the video spin it back to where you want to be and then just keep practicing until you're confident what I'm going to show you next is how to knit so this is very similar to the cast on but you're going to be transferring all your stitches from this needle onto this needle so put the needle in from the front to the back as you did with the cast on wrap the yarn around the needle bring the loop through and then you're going to push just the one stitch off your left hand needle and then again you're going to put your right hand needle through your stitch from the front to the back wrap the yarn around and bring a loop through and pull the stitch off of the left hand needle so needle from front to the back yarn around bring that through pull your stitch off until you get all the way to the end so that's how you do knit stitches and if you are to just do rows and rows and rows of knitting you will have what we call garter stitch so I'll show you what that looks like I'm just gonna knit a few rows of knit stitches and then I'll show you the texture so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit okay so I've done a few rows of knitting now and you can see the stitches leave these little bumps along the work and both sides of the knitting look pretty similar next I'm going to show you how to purl and when you do alternating rows of knit stitches and purl stitches that's called stocking stitch so an easy way to remember the difference between stocking stitch and garter stitch is the garter stitch looks a little bit kind of frilly like the top of a stocking and the stocking stitch is just nice and neat and smooth and like a stocking I guess um, so I'll show you how to do the purl stitches and all will become clear so when we purl, we bring our needle from the back to the front. So when we knit, we go from front to back. When we purl, we go from back to front. Bring the yarn around the needle, push that loop through to the back and bring the stitch onto the right hand needle. So we're going from back to front, yarn around, bring the stitch over onto the next needle so from back to front yarn around push the loop through to the back take the stitch off the left hand needle back to front yarn around push the loop through put the stitch off the left and onto the right needle now remember if you need any more help with pearls you can always pause and replay this section of the video as many times as you need to so if we're going to do stocking stitch what we'll do now is we'll do a row of knitting rather than a row of pearls so you remember that is going from the front to the back so we're just going to knit all the way to the end And then when we're going back we're going to do a row of purl stitches so remember that's from the back to the front yarn around push the loop to the back and bring the stitch off the left hand needle so I'll do a few more rows of stocking stitch which in your patterns is probably written as ST space 
ST which from the pattern I've seen they didn't explain that abbreviation so now you know so when I've done a few more rows of my stocking stitch or stir stir I'll show you the difference between the garter and the stocking stitch that I was talking about before so I've done a few rows of the stocking stitch now so hopefully you can see what I mean about the difference between the two so this is the garter stitch the bit that I said looks frilly and this is the front side of the stocking stitch so you can see it's got these nice little neat V shapes going all the way um, in stripes down the front of your work if you turn that over you can see the back of the work kind of all looks pretty similar um, if you're really looking for it I would say that the bumps on the back of your stocking stitch are smaller than that on your garter stitch but that's really about as much difference as you'll see there so this is the garter stitch the frilly bit and this is the stocking stitch the smooth bit most of your work's probably going to be in stocking stitch we're going to do increases so there's lots of different ways to make increases with knitting the easiest is the make one now they've said to use make one in the kits but they've then given you different instructions so I'll show you the make one first and then I'll show you the type of increase that you actually need to finish all your toys. If you stretch your work, you can see all these little bars which run between the Vs. When you make one, what you do is you pick up one of these bars. So that's your normal knit stitch normal knit stitch normal knit stitch so we'll try the make one so you can see hopefully this bar here that we're going to pick up so imagine you're knitting you're gonna go front to back yarn round and then bring that yarn through and you, you haven't got a stitch to take off of the left hand needle because you've made a brand new one and then you just carry on knitting your normal knit stitches now you can see because when you're doing the make one increase you need to get the bars between the stitches so like this you can't really do that on the first stitch of a row because you're not between two stitches which is why I think you need to use a slightly different increase from looking at some of the patterns that you've all sent me so I've made two increases there so you can see those two little gaps in my work that's where I've picked up the bars from so I'm just going to do a normal row of purl stitches and then we'll get on with showing you the type of increase that you can actually do. And the type of increase I'm going to show you now is called knit front and back. So these are your stitches and you're going to knit into the front of your stitch you're not going to take it off your left hand needle and when you've knitted into the front you're also going to knit into the back so it can be a bit fiddly so take your time watching this part of the video to knit into the front pass your needle from the front to the back of your stitch bring your yarn around your needle and bring the loop out to the front then you're going to take the needle behind and push through the stitch again so now you've got two loops on your work bring your yarn round again 
can bring that out to the front. Then you can take your stitch off of your left hand needle. So I'm going to show you that a few more times. So knitting front and back once again, you're going to knit with your right hand needle goes from the front to the back of the stitch. You take your yarn around your right hand needle and you bring the loop through to the front. So if you were just doing ordinary knit stitches, you'd now take this stitch off the left hand needle, but you're not. You're now going to take your right hand needle put it behind your left hand needle and bring that right hand needle through the back of that stitch. Take your yarn, wrap it around your right hand needle a second time and bring that loop through to the front of your work. Now you can take the stitch off the left hand needle. So we're going to do that again once more for good luck from the front to the back yarn around the right hand needle, bring that yarn back through the stitch, leave the stitch on the left hand needle, take your right hand needle, put it behind your left hand needle, put the right hand needle through the back of the stitch once more, take the yarn around the right hand needle, Bring that yarn back towards the front of your work and take the stitch off the left hand needle. So you can see I've been doing the increases from the very edge of my work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to knit all the way across in normal knitting until I get to the end. So far we've done the cast on, knit stitches, garter stitch, purl stitches and stocking stitch, make one increases and knit front and back increases. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to change colour. This is just the way I change colour, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way uh, but it works for me. We don't tie any knots in our new colour and I put my knitting needle from the front to the back like I would do if I was just knitting straight knit stitches and then I take my yarn so there's the end but I will pick it up in a loop and then I just put that loop over and bring it through so always make sure that you're not knitting with your tail So you can see I've done my first row of the new colour. Now this stitch here is quite baggy, so you pull them both gently to tighten everything up. And then I will break off the original colour. And then I just like to secure my two new tails together. There you have it, now you're starting a brand new row in pink. So we'll do some stocking stitch in the pink and then we'll change back to green. So I've done a few rows of stocking stitch with my pink yarn and I'm going to change back to the green now. So I have my green tail here. So I'm going to take my needle and pass it through the pink stitch from the front to the back. Then I'm going to pick up my green yarn with no knots in, so I've got a tail, and then I'm just going to pass that over, bring that loop through to the front and bring the pink stitch off the left hand needle. And then I'm just going to work with my green yarn through all the pink stitches. So hold on to the tail of your new colour and the yarn from the previous row and 
and gently pull on them both until that stitch tightens itself up and then you can break off the colour that you're no longer using and just secure your two ends. So we'll do a few more rows of stocking stitch in green and then I will show you how to decrease. The decreases I'm going to show you are two of the really simple ones and they are knit two together and purl two together. You can do these at any point along your work. So if you want to knit two together and take your knitting needle and instead of putting it through one stitch from the front to the back you put it through two stitches from the front to the back wrap your yarn around bring it through and push those two stitches off of your left hand needle put your knitting needle through two stitches from the front to the back wrap your yarn around bring through and take the stitches off the left hand needle. So I'll just decrease until the end of the row and then when I get to the end I'll show you how to pull two together. So we just turn over. So if we were going to do normal purl stitches we'd go from the back to the front through one stitch but we're going to purl two together so needle from back to front through one stitch and through two stitches yarn round the needle push that through the two stitches and take those two stitches off the left hand needle so back to front through two loops back to front through two loops so we'd be due to do a row of knitting on this side if we were doing stocking stitch so you would knit if you were casting off from the purl side you would work purl stitches still so to cast off you knit one knit two And then you take the first stitch that you made onto your right hand needle, you lift it up with your left hand needle and bring it over the second stitch and over the end of your needle. And then you're only left with one stitch on your, uh, on your knitting needle. And then you knit the next stitch Bringing that off the left hand needle and then using your left hand needle you pick up your second stitch you bring it over the third stitch and over the end of your needle and then you've only got one left and then you make another knit stitch so now you've got two stitches on the right hand needle and no stitches at all on the left hand needle. So you're going to pick up the third stitch, take it over the fourth, pass it over the end of your needle. So now you have one stitch and then make a little loop over your knitting needle and pass the fourth stitch over that loop and over the end of your knitting needle. Then you can pull that tight into a knot, break your yarn off, and you've successfully cast off your knitting. And your stitches are not going to unravel. So I don't quite know what I've made there. It's certainly not a red panda, but I have shown you all the techniques you're going to need to know to make 
the red panda pattern so if at any point you get stuck you can come back to the video pause on the section that you need rewind those parts and watch them as many times as you like i strongly suspect as i said before that these techniques are going to be the ones that are used in pretty much all of the aldi knitting kits so if you are having problems with a kit that isn't the red panda by all means please come and take a look at this video it may be useful for you i can't say that for certain though because i've not seen the kits and um, if there are techniques in the other kits that i haven't covered that you're struggling with please let me know and i will see what i can do in terms of creating another video for you but this should help with the majority of cases the next video i'm going to do is going to be something non-fiber related so i don't know how many of you are into video games or online gaming with your friends but my other half and his friends are very much into video games particularly a game called among us and i have been making all of their characters in polymer clay so i think for the next video we will talk about making polymer clay charms like these ones i have to say i am definitely the most proud of this one because there's a lot going on there instead of the standard among us character so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications using the bell icon below and i will see you all next time bye bye